Hollywood Not. Reporter. Um, Mindy Kaylee explains why she wishes parents of college students would take them to freeze their eggs instead of gifting them jewelry and vacations. The actress and mother of two is says it would give women the ability to quote focus in your twenties and thirties on your career and yes, love, but know that when you're emotionally ready and if you don't have a partner, you can still have children, end quote. You want me to go first or do you want to go first? Uh, I'll go. Well. Okay, go ahead. I am completely anti freezing your eggs. This is horrible. It is completely disordered. And this is just another like result of our fallen society that does things out of order. Because God designed us with a plan and a purpose. And there's a reason why you uh, meet somebody, you get married, then you have children. And when you don't do things in that order, chaos happens. And so I believe also that freezing your eggs is also disordered because it is it takes a, um, it creates a life outside of the marital act. I believe as a Catholic that sex was made, um, with two purposes in mind and sex is good and God created sex. I've heard some people it's um, an act even of worship. consider it as a, like a form of worship to God. And I think that's beautiful. And so the purposes that I believe are twofold. One is for the pleasure of spouses, we could say bonding, and one and the other is for openness to life. Not that you make a baby every single time you enter into the marital act, but that there's at least an openness to procreation because that's what happens, that's where babies come from, is sex. So again, bonding and babies, aka openness to life. And so I believe if you have having one without the other is disordered and I believe is a sin against God. So for example, contraception is, um, is bonding of spouses, but there is no, um, openness to life. You have closed off, um, that openness and you have a barrier between you and your spouse, whether it's a physical barrier, aka condom diaphragm, um, or a hormonal barrier there is a barrier between you and your spouse and closed off to the possibility of life like i said you not necessarily making a life every single time you have sex and also um creating a life outside of the marital act would be creating a baby without the bonding so this is also in vitro fertilization, making babies in petri dishes, which would be the primary way I think you would u utilize these eggs is through IVF, which I believe is disordered. Not to say if somebody was created that way, they are disordered or they come from sin. Remember, a, a human life in and of itself, pregnancy in and of itself is not sinful. Maybe the way how you got there was, aka premarital sex or um, sexual violence or IVF. Those things, I would say, are sinful. But the life created is not a sin. So I just wanted to kind of separate those two. And I think that's good that you separated because there's people listening who might not know this perspective. And yeah. And that's good. You and there. again, this is me as a Catholic. I don't know what your opinion is on egg freezing, Mallory. Uh, but to conclude, don't you worry, I'll share. Okay. So that's one um, perspective as a Catholic of why I believe that freezing your eggs is outside of the marital act, um, it would be creating a life outside of the bonding, outside of the marital act. And again, you need both the bonding, sex, and then openness to life. And so if you're making a baby without sex, that's disordered. And if you're having sex without openness to life, disordered. All, and I think that that's sinful. Um, but outside of my faith, um, there is a really good documentary. I believe it's 
free to watch on Amazon Prime called Exploitation. And I've seen it. She actually had me watch it once. Okay, cool. And you, as in she, like you. Oh, did. Me, me? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, cool. you had me watch it like two years ago, I think. Oh, I have no <laughs> memory. Like, yeah, like, you're the she. Oh, okay. <laughs> And yeah. so exploitation, and I encourage, please, everybody, if you think egg freezing is a, is a good, is progress for women, is a positive in society, please watch that documentary. Um, that documentary shows the stories of women. Um, you can almost say it's uh, similar, not equal to like the stories of um post-abortive women who are hurting after abortion and like the pro, the pro-abortion industry is never going to elevate their voices. And so similar, there's stories of girls, uh, women in the exploitation movie sharing about how uh, freezing their eggs, donating their eggs is what they, you know, believe they were doing, that they were donating their eggs to give to other couples who I guess were dealing with infertility. That's a whole other conversation. Um, but I would assume freezing the eggs is part of that process of donating eggs. And some of these girls, uh, women, um, ended up with cancer. I believe uh, one of the girls uh, talked about in the documentary died after. And so there's just other stories of girls like that who like the egg freezing, the egg donating surrogacy industry is never going to elevate their voices, at least I don't think so. And um, so please watch that movie. It's been a, it's been a minute since I watched it, but I do remember it talks about why there's um, health risks and it's not talked about girls go in um, donating their eggs. And I just, in the past week driving around my city, San Antonio, I've seen this, the same billboard in different places talking about, I think you could get up to $60,000 to donate your like, eggs. You can get bank. You can get good money. And I can totally understand if you're a college age girl and you're, you know, you're struggling to pay rent, pay for classes, whatever. That seems like a good deal. Um, but there's a lot of health risks to that. And so I just wanted to give that perspective too, that like objectively, I would hope everybody, faith or no faith, wherever you are politically, we can get behind that and say, oh, women should know that there are serious health risks and side effects. And we should, you know, uh, learn about these women's stories and not pretend like they didn't exist. They don't exist. Yeah. So those are my thoughts. I think egg freezing is horrible. Um, but I do think I can, I can understand the appeal, like how the, how, like how the, the article is saying, of uh, live your best life in your twenties, your thirties. And when you're ready, your eggs are there and you don't have to worry about your fertility when you're 45 and finally ready to settle down after your career or whatever. Your thoughts. Yeah. My thoughts. Okay. So. I have thought about getting my eggs um, frozen numerous times. That has crossed my mind. Um, and I'm coming at it from this perspective. Uh-huh. I am 28 years old. Tw- I'm sorry, I'm 27. I am that sound that was going around. I'm 27 year old. I have no prospects. I have no money. And I'm scared. Like, that is me. That So... And I have no idea if marriage is in my future. I would like it to be. I would hope it would be. With the right things are going, it might not be. I, you know, I can't. There's people who are like, yeah, I know God has. I can't confidently say that if I'm being honest. I want to be a mother. I've wanted to be a mom my entire life. I assumed I was. Up until recently, I'll say, I assumed I was going to be a mom. Like, it never crossed my mind that it is not a possibility. It never crossed my mind. I mean, even when I was younger, like I, I played mom all the, I I don't know. Like I've not always loved kids. I've always worked with kids the past couple of years. I haven't because of the life circumstances I'm in. So 
and that's been different, but like I've always volunteered, like I've just always wanted to be a mom. I think I'd make a pretty decent mom. I'd laugh at my kids, but probably a lot more than I should. So, you know, obviously there's areas of growth in that, but you know, I think I'd make a great mom. You would make a I've wanted- great mom. Thank you. I've wanted that a long time. So I thought about it because it was like, well, you know, God, if that's, if a spouse is not in the cards for me, I at least could be a mom at the very least. I mean, I could, I think I'd be good at it through. So I looked into it. Um, and to, what's so funny is Minnie Kapling did this on her show. She has a funny, hilarious show. There is a plot where she starts a fertility, um, clinic. And, um, that's where I honestly, that's where I, got, I was like, Oh, I didn't really know too much about this. Let me see. This was in college. I was like, well, let me just look at this. I've never really heard of a freezing your eggs. What does that even mean? So I did some research and as I got older, I was like, okay, you know, clock is ticking. Cause that's the thing too, you guys, like this is a tough pill to swallow, but you're out half your eggs by 30, half. Now, you know, I read somewhere that you still have tons, like half as in like, you go from like, this isn't the number, but for example, like 8,000 to 4,000, how that 4,000 is still half of 8,000. So that's still less than 8,000, but that's still a lot. So not those exact numbers, but that's what I heard. So like all is not lost. If you get pregnant after 30, like it's not over, but the reality is like, it's harder. The reality is like, you know, especially in the conservative movement in, or in the conservative world in general, men are not really looking for women in their third. Like I'm just being real. Um, and it's harder and harder once you hit 30. And I was looking at my watch, especially after my, you know, last really big breakup. Okay. Realistically, this is not me getting married is <laughs> becoming lesser and lesser possibility. So I looked into it and then I started doing more research and then I started getting involved in the pro-life movement. And then I really just started thinking about like, why is it that I want to have children? Doing the more research, I saw the movie Melanie suggested. Very interesting. I didn't know a lot of the things. I just remember, I don't remember all the logistics of it. I remember that someone died. I remember that like the chance taking your eggs out really does not mean that you're going to have a baby. It just means that you took your eggs out. It those eggs can get lost. They can die. There, the chances of okay, you took the eggs out. Great. Now you got to find a sperm donor. Okay, cool. The cost, I didn't realize how expensive it was. Like going into it, because on the show, um, young college girls were doing it. And, you know, when I was doing research about it, people weren't really talking about the cost. They were just like, yeah, this is good. This will, if you really want to be a mom one day, this is a great thing to do if you're thinking. Because here's the other aspect of it. And I think that conservatives don't realize this especially when you're talking to other conservatives, especially single women, there's tons of girls out there like me. I was not one of those girls that wanted to put my career first. I'm in a career and my career is first because I have no other option. If I don't work, I'm just a bum at home with my parents. Like no offense to bums or anything. Like I'm trying to insult anybody, but like I have a career because I need a job. I'm 28. I can't just 27. I keep saying 28. I'm 27. I can't just sit at home. You know, it's not because I want to put my career first, not because I don't want to be married. That's not, not the case at all. It's not because I don't want to date, you know, because there's are women who are like that, who are like, no, I'm not going to date till I'm 35 because I want to focus on my career. I'm not one of those. And I've talked to girls. Some of you are listening right now. You're right there in the same boat as me. You just haven't met anyone for whatever reason. And I think sometimes the conservative movement forgets that. So they make all these comments and assumptions about people. And it's like, no, some of us are focused on our career because we have no other option. Anyway, so I started looking at that stuff and I'm like, okay, I, this, okay, something feels wrong. So then I started going more in the pro-life movement and I just started learning more about like, what is the purpose of having children? Why do we feel the natural need as women to want children? Yes, there's women who don't want kids. That would be the abnormal. The reality is that's the abnormal. No offense if that's you. Not, I'm not saying anything's wrong with you. I'm just saying that is the abnormal. Naturally, women want children. Why do we feel this? Why does 
it hurt when a woman gets an abortion, even if she wanted an abortion? Why is she still sad? Why are children so important? Why are they so precious? Why is it so hard to raise a child by yourself? Why is it so hard to raise a child without their, as a woman, without their biological father? Why is it so hard to raise their child with two of the same genders? So I started learning and re- doing more research and learning more about that. And I just came to this conclusion that like God's design is man, woman, child. And unfortunately, if I don't have the man, it is outside of, it's disordered, like Melanie said, um, it's disordered and I don't have God's best. God's best is man, woman, child. If I don't have the man and I just go woman, child, it's not God's best, it's disordered. And if I truly love a child, I would want the child to have man, woman. I would want the child to have a mom and a dad. So it's really selfish. And I'm not saying that if you are in the situation, you still feel this way. I'm not calling you selfish. I'm saying for myself, I came to the realization it is selfish for me to want to create a child without a husband. Cause also too, realistically, I mean, growing and here's the reality of the situation too. Like I grew up with both my parents, almost all of my friends growing up, have both their parents. I can only think of one person who did not have both their parents, but their parents were both very, very involved. Uh, their parents were divorced, but they were very, very involved. I wouldn't even know where to start to raise a child for myself. Like, I don't have any, I just personally didn't grow up around that. So I don't even have any role models in that degree. So there's just so many factors that, like, it's just disordered. What is hard and, you know, I'm, I don't want to say I'm speaking for conservative women like myself. I don't want to say that, but like, what is hard about it is that sometimes we have these desires that are just so strong. And one thing that like, one thing that I think about is we want things really badly and it's not necessarily that God doesn't want them for us or that God doesn't want these things. Cause it's not bad to want to be married and have kids. That's not bad at all. But if that's just not God's plan, it's just not God's plan. And like what I've started praying is like, God, let your will be done. So if your will is for me not to have kids and like thinking about that almost makes me like want to tear up. And like, honestly, when I was reading this and thinking about it, I did tear up. I'm really glad I'm not doing that now. Mm. <laughs> like, this is a <laughs> space, Mallory. <laughs> no, but like, if that's not God's plan for me, then okay. He has something else for me. That is great. Cause at the end of the day, God is good. So whatever happens, it is going to be for my good. And it goes back to the holiness versus happiness. Mm-hmm. Like That's something yeah, God's really been exactly. teaching me right now. Like he doesn't, I don't want to say he doesn't care about my happiness, but like what matters is holiness. Like how am I working to become more holy? Me creating a child without a husband, um, that is more for happiness, yeah. not holiness. And then the other day I have to put holiness above happiness even if that means that I don't have something that I really really want I I cannot express how badly I want a daughter that I want to also say in case God's listening that looks like me nothing wrong with daughters that look like their fathers I just cannot imagine birthing a adorable little girl and she looks just like my husband that would be I would love that child nonetheless, but I really would like a mini me. That's just me. That's just me personally what I want. I could totally see so, like, happening. <laughs> what? Like me having a mini me? Yeah. Or, like, and dressing the child. Oh, okay. Match you. Absolutely. We would be match. Honestly, if we could match till, you know, she's 18, 19, I'd love that. <laughs> but my whole point being is like that. I'm not saying God doesn't want that for me. I'm just saying like that might not be his plan and that's okay. There's so many other ways this desire can be fulfilled, um, you know, being a good auntie, um, you know, we're honestly working in the pro-life movement. I, you know, the more I get involved and the more I do things with the women that are pregnant, I'm going to get my fill of babies. Like, it's not like, it's not like there aren't, the whole purpose is babies. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. So, you know, I think that what's, this goes back to what we've talked about before is like the idea of like pleasing yourself. So hearing Mindy say that, I 
totally understand where she's coming from. I totally understand the hardness of it in the sense of like, it is really hard wanting something that like you, cause what, what's so hard about like relationships and stuff like this is, it's not just you and like, sorry, it's not just like me wanting something. And like, for example, like a career, I can work hard to get this career to be in a relationship someone else you gotta like mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. else to work hard too yeah and that's what's so hard so like i get it i get like that feeling i get that like it's really it's so hard out here dating especially in today's climate with so many other factors guys are looking for things that just really you know guys love to say women are looking for the one percent i'm sorry i don't know those women i think that you're looking at the wrong I think you're looking at the wrong woman. Um, if I'm being honest, like I can probably send you some girls right now, pictures of them and you'd make your comments. So like, but my whole point being is like, just the way, like Melanie was saying in the swipe right, swipe left culture is very, it's incredibly difficult. So it's such a hard situation to be in. And like, I would not, I don't want anyone else to be in this, like having this strong desire, knowing that, there is kind of a way to get it, but knowing that that's not God's best. That's this order. That's not what's going to make you holy. Um, so like reading this is just sad because it's, because it also shows that like other people are feeling this way too. There's yeah. other people out there who really, who might not have even put their career first, but they just haven't found someone yet. Um, or they did put their career first and maybe they're kind of, you know, because, like, I think she said it or I saw somewhere else someone was like, one thing I wish is that I did freeze my eggs because I'm getting older. I forgot. I think it was Serena Williams might have said that or something like that. She wished she freezed her eggs because she's getting older. Something along those lines. Like, I've seen that recently. So, like, it's just, it's sad that we've gotten to this point in society um, that we've gotten there. So, yeah, that's my two cents. More like uh, two dollars but <laughs> that's how I feel and if you're out there and you're in a similar situation no you're not alone um God could have some money for you he could not um it's possible I think the prayer should be God's will be done and the older we get the reality is women have a bio biological clock men don't <laughs> not fair um but <laughs> this is how God created us and that's okay like there's nothing to write home about you can be frustrated, like, dang, I wish I could be 80 and still, you know, even have eggs at that point. I'm pretty sure. Well, you know what? I guess anything's possible. Um, but anything's realistically, possible. what'd you say? I said anything's possible. Yeah. There's Elizabeth in the Bible, Sarah. So it's anything possible. is possible, technically. Just <laughs> technically, but realistically, you know, um... <laughs> But this is just how it is. And yeah, I wish I had, I wanted to try to end it on like a lighter note, but I can't really well, keep it I had lighter. some thoughts um, to okay, add to go what for you're it. saying. Like when, while Please you do. were talking, I was, you did remind me that I believe children do have a right to a mother and a father. And I know that there are people who work like in the children's rights space to be a voice and advocate. I'm for trying children. to have one of those ladies on the podcast. Nice. So. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm trying. children who, you know, are not of, of complete, you know, developmental um, age to consent to things. They can't speak up for themselves. Like, no, we have a right to a mother and a father, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I was reminded of that, um, same thing, whether you're wanting, I, I remember I knew a friend in college who was considering the idea of, adopting a child like he also had the fear of i'm never gonna get married and what if i just adopt and um i think he discerned out of that idea but you know similarly just to just put it out there whether you're a guy wanting to create a life or adopt a life or you're a woman wanting to create a life or adopt a life um or people that are in same same sex relationships also wanting to adopt or create a life it is disordered that god designed us to be man and woman and 
that children have the right to a mother and a father. Uh, I wanted to add too, I um, do think that there is beauty in, um, you know, sacrificing your desires, like saying, God, I really want this thing, but I lay it down at the cross. It doesn't make sense right now. I'm not sure why, but I'm surrendering this to you. So not to say that that's easy, clearly that's easier said than done, but like how you're saying, Mallory, holiness over happiness. And so I think too, if the goal is heaven and sainthood, um, I think it is okay. Like it, it is a wise thing. It is so good to humble yourself and just lay down those desires to be praying that prayer that you're praying of your will be done, God, not my will. I really want this thing. I don't know what the future is going to look like, but I, Jesus, I trust in you. And then the last thought I have is that there are, I can think of several women in the pro-life movement and uh, uh, either like, you know, more maybe well-known women or just women in um, my personal pro-life life um, in Texas that are not married. And so I think that that also is a calling. And I can think of other people too that are men really? who are unmarried and have like chosen that like full-time ministry work, dedicating myself to this cause the rest of my days as a single person is the calling that God has given me for my life. And um, so not to say that that's everybody's mindset, but I, I do know of some men that have that mindset. And yeah, so I just wanted to share that point too, that I think that there are people who maybe are called to full-time like ministry work. And because the reality is, you know, like, um, you know, a single person can give way more time than mm -hmm. the married person with five kids at home. It's going to look mm -hmm. a bit different in the way how we help in pro-life movement. Like you can always still do something, but I'm sure it's going to look a bit different. Probably, you're probably not going to want to go out to the sidewalk every day with, you know, five kids, you know, right. just like with a pregnant belly. Yeah. Just like giving one example. So I do think there is beauty in somebody that has said, you know what? I recognize like this is the calling God has given me and I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to say, okay, God, I really had this desire and I'm laying it down and I'm going to serve you the best I can with, you know, the rest of my time on earth. So just wanted to give those thoughts that I, I've seen other, I can think of other people. I can think of five people in my head of who've like, whether purposefully or not have given <laughs> themselves to the movement as single people. And yeah, I think it's beautiful. And I'm thankful that some people have, you know, answered yes. Yeah. And I think to wrap this up, I think also to realizing that like, it's not the end of the world. I think sometimes it feels that way because it's something that you desire and everyone else around you has it. And in the conserv I you saying that, you know, people, I, once we get off, I'd love for you to send me their accounts. Cause I do <laughs> no like, well, a, I don't know any a, and then B like, I desire, like I, while I'm in this season, I want to be a good steward of my singleness. And I just feel like I can't find any, like there's nobody really that I know that's like everybody is married or has married with kids or is engaged. And like, even my personal life, like I'm kind of, I have one friend and Isabel that are one friend, like that lives in Charlotte with me. That's single. And then Isabel, like that's kind of it in my entire like closeness life. Oh, and Victoria, um, not the married one you guys know, but one me and the one you know. Anyway. So like, that's kind of it. Everyone else around me is like, um, 
So, and I know I've talked to other girls online who are in the same situation, but we don't live near each other. And they're in the same situation where everyone else around them is. So, like, it does feel kind of lonely. And I want people to not emulate or not even look up to, but I'd like to see how does walking in singleness in your best ability without being, because there's other type of single people that are like, you know, there's nothing wrong with this if this is your thing, but I don't want to be this person that's like always like, watch me as I prepare for my husband watch me be single and prepare for my husband like I don't that's great there's nothing yeah. wrong with that but I kind of don't I personally don't really like that type of like single lady vibe like I'm preparing for my husband I kind of want the hey I'm doing what God has called me to do right now if I run into him he's I'm following God he's gonna run next to me he's following God Ooh, we're gonna run into each other at the cross yeah here we are, me, him, and Jesus. Like, that's more <laughs> what I'm looking for. Um, instead of just, like, <laughs> everything I do is for my husband. Um, yeah. I just don't like that. So if you know people who are uh, single and not like that, I'm afterwards, please send them my way. I know. I feel like other people, like, I feel like some people do say, like, I just, I gave it to God. I stopped looking. And then that is when I met my person. Um, I have heard that perspective and I want to add too, I think there are people who get married, you know, early thirties, mid thirties, like it happens. Yeah. And so, you know, people do that. And so no, I'm, I just want to give you hope. Like, I don't yeah. think all hope is lost for Mallory Finch and finding her future <laughs> house. Yeah, I think, and then after this, we have to change the topic. Um, <laughs> I think, um, and once again, I'm not trying to speak for everyone in my situation, but I think other people would probably agree that are in the situation. It feels that way when you are hearing, it's only on our side of the aisle, which, you know, positive, negatives of everything. You're only hearing on our side of the aisle, get married young, get married young. Oh, if she's not married by 30, yikes, watch out. She probably had some sort of hoe phase. What? And you only hear that on our side of the aisle. I've never oh. heard comments like that. Oh, girl. Well, how? I, I'll send you some stuff. There's well, people who say some really bad. hanging out with those people? Well, no, no. This They're is toxic. more of like, these are social, these are commentators. And oh, like, okay. Yeah, 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 these are commentators. And, you know, there's nothing there's some validity to that statement i'm sure but that's not my situation i'm thinking of two girls who listen to this podcast that's not their situation yeah um so you know i think a lot of it is discernment too because if it's a good man that is a christian following god he can use discernment like hey we just didn't meet that's why she's still single yeah as opposed yeah so like there's always those things it's just sometimes these things get into your head like oh dang is there something wrong i don't know anyway that's enough of that. You guys do your research on um, getting your eggs removed and I just don't want do to it. Throw in a little um, ad there um, for all the Catholic people out there, or even if you're not Catholic. There is the uh, National Catholic Singles Conference every year. Oh. <laughs> where single Catholics, I guess, from all around the world come together and listen to some awesome talks. I've never gone. I think I would like to go just to, like, meet other Catholics. But it sounds like it's a great place to meet people if you, like, <laughs> know you're single and you and other people know they're single and then you just, like, go. So, sounds like fun. Um, I know some people, well one person specifically that married someone she met off of Catholic match. So I think like the Christian dating like app space is, is another thing to try. Um, I just want to recommend it. I know Mallory has tried everything <laughs> under the sun. Um, I even tried yeah, the Catholic that dating. conference that probably you didn't know existed until I said it. And then, and then Catholic match and like, uh, uh, Christian Mingle and FarmersOnly.com. So, like, <laughs> I think those are cool. Yeah. Yeah. These are all options um, for people out there. 
well, <laughs> like, why not? I just like, why not? Like, just shoot your shot. Like, just do the thing. Like, the way how Jerry and I started dating is because I just shot my shot and I flirted and I said, uh, what I claim to be the best Catholic pickup line. So have you been discerning the vocation of marriage lately? And now we're getting married. And of course, there was a lot of things in between that story. But, <laughs> but my point is, is that I shot my shot. I was like, you know what? Why the heck not? I don't know this boy. I don't know if I'm ever going <laughs> to see him again. Hey, like, do you want to discern marriage with me? Like, I just did it. And so... Um, I just want to give that advice to other girls. You know what? Like, just do it. I think 